Before we jump into today's episode of Chicago Bears Now, my name is Harrison Graham. Who's excited for the draft? How can you not be having two top 10 picks? Smash the like button right now if you're excited for today's NFL draft or this year's NFL draft. Coming up on today's show, my first Bears draft big board for 2024. Welcome into Bears Now. I am going to unveil my first big board for the 2024 NFL Draft. I'll probably update slash expand on this as we get closer to the draft at least one more time, maybe twice. Maybe I do it like second week of April, then the week of the draft. So stay tuned for that. Another reason to subscribe. Uh, today, we'll focus on 20 prospects. Uh, I'm not going to do some crazy top 50 yet. Uh, my final one's probably going to be a top 50, maybe top, you know, rapid fire top 100, something like that. We'll see. Uh, 20 prospects today, and uh, we will go from there. All right, number one, we don't need to spend a lot of time. Caleb Williams, um, I think he has the potential to be the most impactful player in this draft at the most impactful position. We all know he's the heavy, 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 heavy favorite to be the number one overall pick. I think that's as close to a done deal as it could possibly be. He's my top guy. And remember, I, I should add this caveat too. This is based on what the Bears need as well. So it's a combination of best players in the draft, but also at positions of need. So, like, I don't have any cornerbacks on this list, uh, for example. Okay, Marv <coughs> excuse me, Marvin Harrison Jr., I've said it for a while. I think he's the safest player in this draft. I think he's probably the best overall player in this draft right now. Obviously, Caleb just plays a more impactful position. That's why I have him number one, uh, and he's pretty damn special as well. Uh, I'm not concerned about the lack of testing or any of that stuff. Uh, the tape speaks for itself for MHJ. He's training to be a player, uh, not to uh, run cone drills. Drake May, and I just want to mention this. Drake May is my only other quarterback on my big board, and the reason is because if you're the Bears, you only need one emergency plan behind Caleb Williams at this point. We're a month out. All signs point to Caleb. If disaster strikes, I would pivot to Drake May. I'm not putting Jaden Daniels or J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix in my top 20. If I was just doing a top 20 overall big board, I would for sure have Daniels on it. But I don't need it for this because I only need one backup plan. And, and, and that's, uh, that's Drake May right now. We've gone through his pros and cons before, but we'll show him here again. The arm is strong. He can make all the throws. He attacks the middle of the field very well. Underrated scrambler. You can use him as a runner, especially in the red zone as well. Uh, does have some careless decision-making at times. He needs to slide more when he scrambles. Uh, and uh, there's some footwork, question marks, leaves some clean pockets too often. But I think his tape is clearly ahead of Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy. Uh, he's my backup plan if something goes awry with Caleb Williams. He's the only other quarterback I'm putting on this list. All right, let's go back to receiver Malik Neighbors. Uh, a lot of people think the gap between Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. is kind of non-existent, and some believe that to be the case with Roma Dunze as well, is you kind of package these two together. I do think these three receivers are all top five prospects in this NFL draft. I would have them all ahead of Jaden Daniels for those wondering as well. I don't really care who is sitting there. I like neighbors slightly more. I just think he's a little more explosive. Um, you could make an argument for a Dunze to get that bigger outside receiver opposite of Morin with uh, Keenan in the slot. That's perfectly fine. I would lean neighbors ever so slightly, but if both were somehow sitting at nine and they took a Dunze, I certainly wouldn't complain about it. And I do want to ask you this. Is it a no matter what for you? And what I mean by that is, if neighbors or a Dunze falls to nine, are you going to take that player if one of them gets there? Type Y for yes, you are, or no for no, you would not necessarily. For me... I think I have reached the point where I'm very, very close to no matter what, if Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze falls to nine, which I do think is possible, I would draft that player. So I'm typing Y for yes. Certainly understand the argument for edge, trading down, um, offensive tackle, which are all good options, which is why the Bears are in a good situation. But I still view this receiver thing, especially with Keenan Allen being a little older and uh, having some minor injury concerns, that you get one of these dudes, I mean, you're really set at that wide receiver position. Speaking of, Joe Alt, I've got him at number six. Um, I think Edge is a bigger need, but I do think Alt is a better prospect than the Edge rushers by enough of a gap that I will still have him higher. Um, his film, in my opinion, in 2023 was the best. 
among all of the offensive line prospects, which is why I think he's in play at number nine. Now, I also think he could be off the board. The Chargers as early as five could take him. Uh, Tennessee could certainly take him at seven. I think that's uh, a, a very, very real possibility. Don't think Atlanta would take him at eight. So if he gets past seven, he very well could be there at nine if a team doesn't trade up above Chicago. Um, don't be surprised. Ryan Poles is a big offensive line advocate. I would not be shocked at all uh, if Joe Alt was sitting there at nine if he selected that player. I've got Dallas Turner next. I think the upside here is why I have him as the highest uh, ranked edge on my big board. Is he as polished as Latu Latu? No. Uh, is he as big as Jared Verse in terms of fitting the mold of a 4-3 defensive end? No, but he has insanely long arms, insanely high athleticism traits, uh, which we know Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus value. Uh, I would lean Turner and on that upside. And by the way, it's not like it's traits without production. He's still been productive. Like, he had 10 sacks last year. So um, you put that type of explosiveness opposite of Montez Sweat, that's, uh, that's pretty fun to think about. I do have Jared Verse next. Uh, I actually like Latu better as a pass rusher. I'll explain why I have Verse a little bit higher here in just a second when we do get to Latu. But he's been consistent. Two really steady years at Florida State. Super well-spoken. I was more impressed with him than almost any other player at the NFL Combine. Or, uh, yeah, the NFL Combine when I got to be up with these prospects close. I think he checks the character boxes that Ryan Poles is looking for. He's got a great story, starting at Juco, under-recruited, makes his way to Florida State, becomes this really good prospect. Uh, I would certainly be perfectly content with him at number nine. I would love it even more on a potential trade down from nine, but uh, he's a really, really good pass rusher who's got good athleticism and size as well. Appreciate Prize Picks for sponsoring today's show. If you want to get in on Daily Fantasy, there's no better place than Price Picks, and I recommend you do so. I hope a lot of you guys got signed up during March Madness because Rolly and I made a bunch of money over this past weekend, and there's opportunities coming up this week as well with the Sweet 16 getting started on Thursday. I got my guy Miram here. Listen, this guy can really make it rain. I think he gets more than 10 points here. Dalton Connect, one of the best players in college basketball, didn't have his best game last time out. I'm a big believer in veteran stars bouncing back after a bad game game. I think he does that. Give me the more there. Got the less on Marcus's points. Iowa State just stifling defensively, so I like him to go less than 16 and a half. 10 bucks to win 50. Five times your entry there. You can win up to 100 bucks right now, depending on the type of entry you go with. Pricepix.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get started today. Choose more, choose less. It's price picks. It's easy. Get signed up right now. Okay. Olu Fashanu. <clears throat> Let me get some water real quick. Olu is an intriguing case for me because I thought coming out of 2022, he was by far the best offensive lineman coming back in college football. You could argue, based on the tape, he's the third or fourth best tackle just from this year. He didn't get worse. In fact, I do think he improved in 2023. I just thought other guys played really well. Like Joe Alt clearly had a better year, in my opinion. A guy we're going to talk about uh, coming up did as well. But you're talking about a multi-year starter at left tackle at a high rate. Oh, by the way, he was high school teammates with Caleb Williams, so you wonder if that plays an even tiny role here as a possible pick at number nine or in a slight trade down. And look, I like Braxton Jones. He's a starter in this league. Ryan Pohl said as much that Braxton can start in this league. But if he thinks there's an all-pro in this draft at left tackle that he can get his hands on, Joe Walt, Olufashanu, someone else, don't rule it out. Is it a top need for the Bears? No, but the Bears very well could still go BPA, and if one of these tackles is that and they're sitting there at nine, I would not even be slightly shocked if they took him because protecting Caleb Williams is, is going to be vital. Not that you can't with what you currently have, but gives you a better chance to do so if you take a blue chip tackle in this draft. Don't be surprised if it happens. Should the Bears look to upgrade from Braxton Jones? Type U for upgrade or D for don't. I think they should be open to it. I don't think you have to force the issue. You've got a starter there. But, again, if, if there's a clear opportunity to upgrade there based on who's available on the board, I think you uh, have to at least uh, consider taking that swing. At number 10, Layatu Latu, who I've said it and I'll continue to say it, I think is the most polished pass rusher in this draft. I think his pass rush moves are excellent. He's got an awesome chop move, which is pretty rare for a rusher at his age. Uh, but... Production aside, pass rushing ability aside, 
The issue with Law 2 is what are the medicals? And that's why I have him a little bit lower. I don't have access to that information. The Bears do. Um, if his medicals are 100% clean and there's no concern that year four, year five, he, he's going to, you know, be like Leighton Van Der with the Cowboys and have to retire after five or six years in the league, um, I would arguably take him above the other two edges that I mentioned. I still have him in my top ten for that reason because I think he's that polished and that good and probably give, as a rookie could be the best rusher in this class. Uh, Turner's upside is definitely better, but – What's the medical situation? Can he be a 10-year player in this league? If you can, go take him. If you're worried after his rookie contract he could kind of be done, then yeah, he's probably going to slide a little bit. Number 11 here, Brock Bowers. Uh, look, for me, just my Harrison's just like favorite players in this draft in terms of just raw ability, he's probably a top 10, maybe even a top 5 or 6 guy. But I just think when you combine the Bears' needs, the positional importance – what positions the Bears have filled, Brock Bowers probably is not going to be a Bear. Would I completely rule out the possibility? No, because Shane Waldron likes to run 12 personnel, 13 personnel, and doing it with Cole Komet, Brock Bowers, and Gerald Everett's fun to think about, but um, I think they just end up getting more of a blocking tight end as that number three guy so they can run the football. Bowers can block some, but he's more of a receiving threat, which is what you added in Gerald Everett. I'd be surprised if the Bears took him. I wouldn't completely rule it out. I've got him at number 11. I'll say this. If you trade down from 9 to like the mid-teens and he's still there and he's by far the best player on the board, go take him. It's another weapon for Caleb Williams. I got no problem with that. If you want daily Bears content for free, hit that sub button. We're not charging you a dime. We're here every single day uh, busting out videos for you guys. We appreciate the love and support. We've crossed 90,000 subscribers, trying to get to 100 as soon as possible. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash bears now. All right, Talise Fuaga. This dude is really good. Like, I would say more than any other player, I have grown onto this guy more than any other prospect in this draft. My only question for Fuaga is can he play left tackle? Just a right tackle at Oregon State. He's kind of had a Darnell Wright type of rise where – after the college football season, he was probably like a late first rounder, but then he goes, and I think he was at the Senior Bowl, and he was at the Combine, he's impressing people, and all of a sudden, people are like, this guy could go ahead of Olu, which I thought his tape was actually better than Olu's last year, but again, can he play left tackle? We know Olu can. Fuaga has only played right, so if you draft him, one of two things has to happen. Well, I guess one of three things happens. One, you could kick him inside. He's definitely big and strong enough to do that. Two, you kick him to left tackle. Or three, you play him at right tackle and you kick Darnell right to left tackle, who played some left tackle at Tennessee. So if you're comfortable with right kicking out there, sure, take Fuaga. But if you have questions about any of those options, it's kind of hard to take him, I think, based on where uh, this offensive line construction is right now. Byron Murphy, another player that's growing on me as well. I got him here at 13. I thought about putting him 10, 11, but Fuaga and Bowers are just awesome players. Uh, Murphy had good, not incredible production, but it was good. Uh, he's gotten some Aaron Donald comps. They have very similar uh, body uh, kind of comps there, height, weight, um, testing. It's all very similar. Now, look, <laughs> he's not going to be Aaron Donald. No one is, right? Could he be 70% of Aaron Donald? If he is, that's a pro bowler. So um, we've heard Matt Eberflus talk about three tech engine to this defense. I think this would come down to how do the Bears feel about Javon Dexter? If they think he's, he's ready to be a starter now, then you probably don't take Murphy. If there's questions there, bring in Murphy. Let those guys compete. In worst case, you have two good options at three tech. Brian Thomas Jr., my 14th prospect, who he's a damn good receiver, man. I, I think in most drafts, like if he was in last year's group after this year he had at LSU, he might have been close, if not the number one receiver taken. Jackson Smith and Jigbo went 20th overall. Thomas might go higher than that in a better receiver draft. I think top 15 is on the table. Big play machine. Now, he doesn't run the full route tree. I think that's something he's got to improve on, but really good speed, good release off the line. He's fast as hell. Um, go routes, deep crossers, posts. I mean, if you brought him in here and he was your number three after Allen and DJ Moore, that <laughs> I think he'd be pretty damn good in that role. Troy Fountainew, the offensive lineman out of Washington. He can play tackle. He can play guard. Uh, I think people are labeling him as a guard too early, and then he gets to the combine, he has 34 and a half inch arms, which is like plenty long enough to play tackle. Those are longer arms than Darnell Wright had last year. Um, but he does have that versatility because he's strong enough to play guard. So you like that. 
Um, there's question marks about the Bears' guard position after this year. Tevin Jenkins, final year of his rookie deal. Nate Davis' contract, easy to get out of after 2024 if you don't want to commit to that third year. Um, so maybe you bring him in. He's your sixth offensive lineman, or he competes with Braxton Jones. At worst, he's your top backup, um, and he's a starter in 2025. Really good player on tape, like the versatility as well. Name a draft prospect we should be talking about more. Doesn't matter what round. It could be top 10 caliber guy, top 20, third round, fifth round, day three, whatever. I want to hear from you guys. Who are some prospects we should be discussing more here on Chicago Bears now? All right, kind of going to go rapid fire to wrap up the top 20 here. J.C. Latham, uh, tackle out of Bama. He can play every position except center. Guard, tackle, I think he can play left and right side. I'd have some questions about left tackle, which is why he's a little low for me, but uh, he's a mauler. Amarius Mims, insane athlete. Injury concerns, playing time concerns. Not a lot of starts at Georgia, but, man, he is a freak of nature. Jackson Powers Johnson, listen, in a big enough trade down, could you still take him? I think you could because he can't play guard as well, has played guard and center at Oregon. I think he's by far the best center in this draft, and he gives you that guard versatility. Jerzon Newton, he's a little, little bit for me because he hasn't been able to work out much in the pre-draft process, had a surgery. So um, him and Byron Murphy have kind of flipped. I think Murphy's going to be the first defensive tackle that goes, but Newton is still a good player. And then uh, Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver out of Texas, I think he's kind of close to submitted himself as that fifth receiver uh, after uh, Brian Thomas Jr., Wide receiver one potential. He's got the size, got the speed, uh, got the tape. A little inconsistent, but uh, the upside is absolutely massive. So there you go. There's my first Bears draft big board. Um, I know a lot of you guys, I see someone in the chat. J.J. McCarthy, where is he? I said it off the top. I'm only putting a second quarterback in there, which is Drake May, because Caleb Williams is 99% going to be a Bear, and if by some drastic scenario they have to pivot, well, you only need one backup option. For me, it's Drake May. That's why it's my big board. So um, if it was a raw big board, uh, I would have Jaden Daniels top 20. I actually don't know if I'd have McCarthy in my top 20, if I'm being honest, but uh, uh, he would potentially be in there. So that is why on that. If you want more coverage around the Bears, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. We got you covered here on this channel.